For as long as I can remember, I've been putting my flash as close to my subject as I possibly can. I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to put my long-held theory to the test by moving my flash further and further from my model and see what results we get. Is it going to make it better and better? Is it going to make it worse and worse? I think so. But there's only one way to find out and that's to actually do the setup. So whilst I'm getting everything ready, you should be clicking on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. But for me, well, let's get a light set, let's get a model in, let's get shooting. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Sophie. Sophie is gonna be the model for this shoot. And before we get going, let me just walk you through the setup. I'm gonna start with the background. So the background is this white wall. It is literally just a white wall of my studio, but you'll notice the big black background over there. Now that's not the background to my photo, that's there to absorb light from my flash, stop it bouncing off the white wall and slightly ruining the results. What about the light itself? Well, for that, I'm gonna be using flash. It, this is the Flashpoint Explore 400. You don't really need a light this powerful for this sort of setup. A speed light would be absolutely fine when it's this close, but we're gonna move the light, so that will come in handy. The softbox itself is a glow round softbox, around about 70 centimeters, and that's all gonna stay the same throughout the different setups I'm gonna try. So that's the basic lighting. Let's talk about the camera. So I'm gonna use a camera on a tripod just so we get consistent results throughout this session. And I'm gonna use a prime lens. This is a 45 millimeter f1.8. Again, I just want to get consistency when we're looking at the different lighting positions. Now I've already metered this out. I know the exposure is correct at f4, 200 ISO and 250th of a second, my flash sync speed. Sophie, let's just take a test shot and see how this goes. And when I do that, you can see we get a classic lighting position. The background has gone gray because of the inverse square law. Nice lighting on Sophie, little bit of contrast from the light, but soft shadows. The join between the shadow and the highlights is nicely blended. So I'm gonna take the light and I'm gonna move it so it's roughly, very roughly, twice the distance away it was before. Now, if I move the light, several things are going to change, but the obvious one is, well, the power of the flash will need to be adjusted because light has to travel further. So let's just take a meter reading. I need my flash to read F4. At the moment, it reads F2. So I need to increase my flash power until I get to F4. There we go. F4. So that will give me the same exposure on Sophie, but of course moving the light will change its properties apart from power. Let's just take a test shot. And at first glance, this actually looks okay. The background feels a little bit lighter, and that's gonna be down to light fall off, the inverse square law. But really, you've gotta look at these side by side to see a big difference. And well, look at the catch lights. That's a great place to start. Notice how much smaller the catch light is in the second picture. So from Sophie's point of view, the light was smaller. That's affected the shadows because the light didn't have as much space to wrap around. There's much more direction to the shadows but saying that they're still reasonably soft so again I'm going to move this light so it's roughly twice the distance it was before and again I'll need to re-meter for this so let's get the flash meter so we need this to read f4 it reads f2 back to f4 okay so perfect that's exactly the right exposure and now I'm currently at 1 8th power to achieve that Okay, Sophie, here we go. Wow, yeah, that is definitely making a difference. The background is a little bit lighter. Once again, that's the inverse square law or light fall off. Same thing, different name. And if you want to learn more about that subject, I've got a whole video on it. Just check out the link in the description below. Comparing it to the previous picture, the catch light is smaller again, which is definitely having an effect. The smaller the light becomes relative to Sophie, the more obvious the angle is, and you can see that in the length of the shadows. The shadows definitely have a crisper edge, but interestingly, they're not as dark as they were in the previous picture, which is a little bit weird. So I'm gonna move the lights again twice the distance, which means going way over in this direction, pretty much 
to the edge of my studio. There we go. So we're asking an awful lot of this little light now because it's got to travel a long way. But the Flashpoint Explore 400, it's a powerful light, so I don't need to change my ISO. I should just be able to increase my flash power. Yeah, F2, hang on. Okay, actually not as much as I thought it was going to be because I'm at half power to get the shot I need. So that's fine. Here we go, Sophie, quick test shot. Well, I'm glad I can't move the light any further away from Sophie because this is not a flattering light at all. It does make the background brighter, but that's about the only good thing I can think to say because everything else looks pretty horrible. The shadows are very much more defined. They are also elongated. But weirdly, look at them now. Compared to the previous picture, the shadows are actually getting lighter, not darker, as I'm moving the light further away. So what's going on? Well, I've got a theory. When the light was up close to Sophie, any light that travelled past her would really be dissipated by light fall off or absorbed by the black background to the side. However, when I put the light further away, the spread of light is such that some of the light would miss the black, hit the white wall of my studio and bounce back onto Sophie, filling in the shadows with light. Add to that, light fall off at a greater distance is pretty much zero, and that bounced off light is really bright, meaning the further I move my light, the weaker the shadows became. And then there are some more subtle differences. For example, you might notice that the colour seems to get warmer as the light moved away. In fact, if I check it, I can see a 300 degree difference between the close light on a low power and the distance flash on a much higher power, and that's mostly down to the flash having a different colour of light at different power outputs. It'll come as no surprise that my preferred lighting position is always going to be putting the light as close to your subject as possible. How close? Well, I go like this. It's got to be just in the shot and then just slightly back it up until it's just out of frame. That's how close I like to put my light. Now, obviously, if I'm going to do that, I need to readjust the flash power and we'll take it down. Well, not quite as low as it goes, but pretty close. That has a couple of advantages apart from the colour being more what I was expecting. It also means that the battery lasts longer, the recycle time is quicker, the duration of the flash is shorter, so my photos are sharper. All good things. Okay, let's take a few pictures like this. So Sophie, are you ready? Okay, here we go. So that's where you get to do some modeling. Brilliant. Move your hands around a little bit, keep them going. That's it, keep moving, keep moving, relax your fingers. Perfect. Testing out the different lighting distances has been really useful for me and hopefully you found it helpful too. Now there is an awful lot of technical information that I've gone through in this video. Go back and watch it again, pause some of the slides because I've put loads of information on the screen that's kind of hard to read in a short period of time. Now if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV and we have new stuff pretty much every single day. And of course remember to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching.